And, uh, you know, sometimes, some mornings I get up and I check Facebook like I did last week, and that prompted an entire rant <laughs> on, on microphone choice. Facebook is a rant engine. It, it is. <laughs> but as we always say, not a good place to crowdsource your home voiceover studio. No, I don't. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It is not. Yeah. And, and it's good for like advice on a certain thing or a certain mic, maybe. Or, right. You but, know, but, but what's your experience with this microphone? Well, it worked fine in my studio with my voice. Right. Who the heck are you? Right. You know, every, you know. every voice, every voice, uh, home voiceover studio is different. They yeah. all have to be custom built and tuned. Well, this morning, I can't even remember whose name it was. So you're safe, whoever you are. <laughs> um, it was a discussion about siblings, it was something along the lines of it sounded great for years. And then I've gone to this microphone and now it sounds sibilant. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, oh, well, it's do this and do that. And mm -hmm. then a couple of smart people like Tim Tippett's jumped in there and said, mm -hmm. You know, it's probably the way you're using it. Because as we always like to say, it's not the equipment, it's how you use it. It can also be the way you're listening to it. That was my next point. And the fact of the matter is, is he said, one client was complaining about it, and now I really hear it. Right. That's the thing when one person points out something. Got it in that's your not, head. It's stuck in your head now, and you can't get it out. Right. The fact of the matter is, is that client was probably listening on his iPhone. Or an iPhone or, iPod, or, or laptop or a MacBook speaker. with crappy little speakers. Or an HP with even what. lousier speakers. Yeah. And, uh, and, and somehow that was sounding simple. And I said, let, let me listen to it. Yeah. So he sent out a copy to everybody on the thread. And he sent me a personal copy mm -hmm. so I could look at it and go. Yeah. And I listened. And I'm like, WTF? There's nothing wrong with this. It sounds fine. Maybe a little, a little sharp. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's like, you know, any engineer, as, as Harold Hill would say, I could deal with my friends with a wave of my hand, this very hand. It was simple, simple thing to do. Just right. a little bit off at about you know, 10K, maybe a little bit below that. Yeah. And they, they could adjust it. Yeah. No one's going to lose a job over an extra little sibilant S. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to a matter of mic technique and how you listen to it. Yeah, because if your if your frame of reference for monitoring is not quite accurate, it's really going to screw up your impression of the way anything sounds. Right. I mean, if you if you what if you went for a month without cleaning your glasses? This is <laughs> this reminds me of a story. Would explain a My lot. cousin's <laughs> wife was an optometrist, and they would help folks that were on Medicaid, Medicaid, and whatever. And they had a lady come in one time. She's like, "I need more medicine for my glasses." <laughs> <laughs> and my cousin takes her glasses off her face, wipes the lenses off, puts them back on her face, and she's like, it's a oh, miracle. That's so much better. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, and then she went home. It's like that with sound. I mean, if you're if you're frame of reference is way out of who are we having an earthquake um <laughs> is that what it is <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um if your frame of reference is so clouded or inaccurate you just can't trust it so bounce it off a couple people whose ears you do trust like me or him. me <laughs> <laughs> because that's what that's the kind of thing that we do we'll listen to the audio in our listening environments on our monitors or headphones things that we listen to day in day out we and understand we'll listen on both yes and we'll, we'll understand the context of how you sound among everything else and if at that point we think you sound sibilant out of out of the bounds of usability right you know we'll we'll tell you and give you some ideas what to do and what really are there really some microphones that are more susceptible to sibilance than others in your experience? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the notoriously less expensive condenser microphones tend to be a little on the bright side. Um, one that comes to mind is the Rode NT1A. And That's everybody's a, got one of those. That is a culprit yeah. for being a little bit too bright. Um, it's so common because it's very affordable and it's very quiet it's not, not very noisy. little self noise yeah, yeah so it, it gets sold a lot many starter studios are rode nt1a scarlet 2i2 boom you know i i hear that probably once a week um but it can be a little bit bright a little proper eq can fix that 
Um, but it's not going to be my first mic for everybody because of that. Mm -hmm. If you tend to already be a very bright, sharp voice with a lot of top end, a mic that's top endy may not be the best for you. Right. But I, oh, go ahead. I have one more thing to tag on to that. Okay. Go for it. I did have a And client. then I'll try to remember what it was I was going to say. Then you go and I'll, and then I'll go. Okay. Age before beauty. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for respecting that. Um, another thing as far as technique is concerned is I tend to find that people who are sibilant also are over projecting and over performing and over pushing their vocal technique. They are, you could definitely coach your uh, sibilant just, voice. If you'll just uh, learn to relax your tongue and talk normally the way we normally talk, you know, and maybe, you know, concentrate on that and just learn to relax and not mm -hmm. press your tongue so hard against the roof of your mouth. So you're trying to get things out a little bit louder and saying things a little bit more like Daffy Duck. Um, that will reduce sibilance a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my technique is essential, but your thoughts again, well, what were you going to say? Yeah. Sibilance can be in a lot of different frequency bands or, you know, sometimes it can be really high sibilance, the very top, top stuff. Right. Sometimes it can be upper mid range, right. that range that's, I sometimes call it the ice pick in the forehead range where it's yeah. just like, ah, and, um, certain microphones do have a bit of a boost in that range. Yeah. And some of the Neumanns do. I had a climate client with a TLM 49 Ooh, nice one mic. that's not quite as, you know, properly popular, popular. And in his studio with his voice, that upper mid range sort of rise or boost was just not flattering on his voice. And I was always EQing it, trying to flatten it out. It just never quite sounded right. Hmm. And that was one of those cases where I recommended bizarrely a much less expensive microphone for him to try. And it would hurt his sensibilities to do that. But I said, why not give, in this case, I said, how about a Caddy 100S a shot? Great mic. Because there's a really cool website, you know it, recordinghacks.com. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they make the, the, the same guys do the, uh, the microphone. The jolly. The, 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 yeah, the no, not Jolly. He does the, uh, the, I'm sorry. Why brain farting? Oh, what's the guy's name? You've built some of his mics. Oh, the ones that you've built. Oh, the record. mic parts. Yeah, mic yeah. Parts. Mic Same parts guy that does make parts. He does the, the mic that uh, Jordan Reynolds came up. Anyway, that uh, website allows you to look at frequency charts for each mic and compare two of them on top of each other. It's Ooh. very cool. Upper right-hand corner, search for mics. Once you see a frequency plot, click on it. It pops up in its own window. And once you're in there, there's another search box. So you can type in another mic. And it will overlay the frequency responses. And what was amazing was that the TLM had this like curve right here. And then the CAD was like flat and then had a little bump at the very top. So mm -hmm. they had very different responses. And the CAD sounded much smoother, much more flattering for him. So he was like, I can't believe I'm going to sell this Neumann for this CAD. I'm like, you know what? It just has to work. It has to work with your voice. Right. It has to sound good. And if yeah. it sounds good. It is good. good. And and that's the bottom line. You know, I just sold my TLM 103. Interesting. I said, I don't need I it. hope Chris doesn't see it. Chris, we love you. We love yeah. you. You know we love you. But I'm Neumann. using a Sennheiser 416 see? almost exclusively now. There so. you go. I'm not going to dump the, the the great Sennheiser Neumann mics. They're, no. you know, but the TLM 103 just wasn't, it, it was just wasn't right for me anymore. Yeah. I mean, I had it for like 12 years. It was my main mic. Went to the 416. It was, it's easier to work with and the mic technique on it is easier. It makes you sound more natural. I got to say, I hear, that, I hear that story over and over it's, again. That's because it it's must be true. Yeah. So, and you're not going to get much sibilance with a 416 unless you're really like you, right yeah, on if, top of it. If you shoot it right into your mouth, it's like, it's like a laser. So if the sibilance is coming from somewhere in your teeth and it's right. pointing there, oh, it's going to hear it. Right. That's why the. The up and below position works so well. Right. With that. And, and that's why mic technique is so important, yeah. you know, and we're always trying to show people have the mic at about eye level, talk underneath it, be five to seven inches away or further and make sure you compensate for the, with the proper level. And usually that eliminates so many problems, mouth noises and sibilance and, or what perceived sibilance. Although I think you and I are probably pretty much convinced that sibilance is in the ear of the beholder, not necessarily the reality of what everybody else is hearing and depending yeah. on what they're listening. Sometimes, to. yes. Yeah. Sometimes that is the case. That is the case. So oh. 
send the audio to us before you make a final judgment and go selling your mic. And that's done through your website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, where I just click on the specimen collection cup and send me a specimen of your audio. Mm -hmm. And for you... And I have that same kind of thing over at georgethetech.com. If you go to the services menu, you look for a sound check, send your audio in, and I'll give you my opinion about what that audio sounds like and what it could be, what you could do to make little improvements. So... All right. That hey, gets you in the right direction. Nobody has as much experience with home voiceover studios than you or I. Everybody else, they're just, they're experts in their own studio. Yeah. Hundreds, thousands of studios. We know what's going on.